What's up guys, Austin Dunham back again with another video. And so I hope all of you have been enjoying the last few videos I've been putting out. And so today we have a Q&A video using the hashtag AskAD. Now I'm gonna be going through my Instagram here and I'm gonna go through some YouTube comments uh, and I'm gonna answer some of you guys' questions. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoyed the video. All right, so the first question is from my Instagram, at GeekAMD, you should follow me if you're not already. But his name is Dex, and he asked me, are you vegan? Because uh, it was a pretty shredded looking picture, you know. <laughs> and I was like, uh, and to answer your question, Dex, no, I'm not vegan. Um, I actually do not like vegetables a lot at all. If I had to describe my diet, it would be definitely probably the opposite end of vegan so i think it's called paleo so uh beef chicken uh dairy literally the opposite of vegan is my diet so that's what i enjoy that's what works for me but to answer your question no i'm not vegan but will i ever go vegan probably not because like i said really don't like vegetables and i don't know how to prepare it well enough to where they will taste good so if anybody wants to be my personal chef whoever's good at um vegan food or vegetables come hit me up please all right let's be great ask me on my instagram is the planche a lot of core strength now the planche if you look at the actual form of it it's literally the opposite of a front lever so a front lever is when you're hanging on the bar straight body right so both exercises including the planche has a lot of core strength in it. When you're doing a full planche, your core is super tight and your your core is stabilizing your whole body from falling over it um, in order to keep your legs up, right? Uh, so the core and the shoulders are very important for both of those movements, but for planche, yes, core strength is a huge deal. And uh, for me, uh, what helped for my core strength in regards to the planche is definitely training dragon flags. Those helped a lot. So if you're if you lack core strength, go ahead and start training dragon flags because you will not regret it because it will help build up your core strength for those movements. All right, I'm gonna take one more question from my Instagram, and it's by UK underscore calisthenics. And uh, this person asks, do you ever use gloves when uh, you do your calisthenics? So I'm assuming you mean on the bar. So I really don't ever use gloves when I'm doing calisthenics because I have these bars at my school gym. They're like metal and the friction is actually pretty good when doing muscle ups and I've never really needed to do uh, or to, I never really needed to have gloves on my hand in order to avoid calluses. And plus see, my hands are honestly pretty good. You definitely can't see it, but I have like no calluses on my hands. It's crazy. Um, and the way I avoid this too is I grip the pull up bar like right here in this area. So I know a lot of people, they grip it right here and then they um, end up getting a lot of calluses. But for me, I always grip it right here and then muscle up. My hands are always sweaty anyway, so I have a lot of friction and I never get calluses. So no, I don't wear gloves, but sometimes I do wear these things called gym paws. I got them off of Amazon. And that's only when I feel like my hands are hurting really, really bad. But that's really where probably like once every two months I'll wear the gym paw gloves. But to answer your question, no, I do not really wear gloves at all when I train. All right, so Ab Al Jabbar Basara asks, why does the military do calisthenics instead of weights? And that is a good question. And I think I have the answer to that. So first of all, the military does a lot of calisthenics, as you all know. So push-ups, pull-ups, sit-ups, running, that all has to do with your body. And the main reason why the military does a lot of this is because, first of all, the convenience factor of just doing bodyweight training. And um, it's pretty easy to test a huge group of people or to lead a group of people in a workout with bodyweight training than it is to go in the gym and uh, do stuff like that. And also because, in my opinion, uh, with the military, you're doing a lot of stuff with your body. You know, you're rucking for a long time. If you're infantry, you're running, you're always, you know, you're always on your feet. So that being said, I feel like the military believes, and I also believe, that you should be comfortable moving your own body weight in uh, some type of situation. You should be comfortable with your own weight because if the military was to use, like, uh, lifted iron, like bench press, shoulder press, all that good stuff, then you will probably have a lot of overweight people because you can lift a lot of weight and be overweight, but in order to meet the military standards, you can't be overweight and you have to be efficient with your own body 
and your own body weight strength, AKA relative strength. So that's why I think the military uses calisthenics instead of uh, weightlifting. So who knows, but that's just my opinion. All right, so the last question isn't necessarily a single direct question. However, I do get this a lot within my comments and Instagram, whatever it may be, I always get this question. So why don't you train legs or why are your legs so small, right? Everybody always asks that question. And so just to put it really, really simple for you, first of all, let me explain. I do train legs, I do work my calves five times a week now. So I work both parts of the calf. I actually use weighted machines in my gym, the seated um, calf raise and the standing calf raise. And so why won't they grow? All right, so first of all, the calf muscles, those are just stubborn muscles. Everybody knows that. If you don't, then you probably have really good gen genetics. And the way your genetics determine how good your calves are is um, how low your calf insertion starts on your leg. So for me, I have a lot of shin, like a lot of shin area. My calf muscle actually doesn't start until really high up on my leg, right? So this is nothing but leg. And then finally my calf muscle start like at the top of my leg. So that's gonna be very hard to grow, first of all, because the muscle is smaller and things of that nature. But if you have good genetics and you probably never work cows in a day in your life and you have great, amazing cows, then your calf insertions are probably in the middle of your leg or at the bottom of your leg, AKA cankles, right? All right, so just uh, you see the people with really good cows, right? So their leg kind of goes like this, like it swoops out. And you can tell at the middle of their leg, that's where the calf muscle starts. And so there's nothing you can really do uh, to change that. For people with um, high calf insertions like me, it kind of sucks, but uh, we just kind of keep training it, and then over time, maybe we'll put a centimeter on it, who knows, but it's all right, because I got the upper body genetics. I'm not complaining about that, so that is my answer to the question, why I have small calves, just to put it really short for you. I'm not going to get into the science of it, but just know it's basically genetics. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you have any more questions, don't forget to leave them down below using the hashtag AskAD so that I can actually find the question. And like I said, also follow my Instagram at GeekAMD. Now you guys stay safe out there this weekend, Hurricane Matthew on the um, Southeast Coast. So everybody down there, please stay safe and I'll be back um, with more videos soon. So hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.